Hello student and welcome to the lecture on social institution and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives understand the life cycle of social institution understand the structure of social institution understand continuity and change understand about family and kinship and understand the caste system let us begin people in every society must fulfill certain function in order to survive they must set up processes for rearing and educating children develop a system for maintaining order and managing relations with other societies agree on methods for producing and exchanging goods and services societies differ in how they carry out these function but they all must somehow accomplish the same tasks in order to survive as a social unit institution regulate the behavior of individual in core areas of society family and relationship networks carry out social reproduction and socialization institution in the realm of education and training ensure the transmission and cultivation of knowledge abilities and specialized skills institution in the labor market and economy provide for the production and distribution of goods and services institution in the realm of law governance and politics provide for the maintenance of the social order while cultural media and religious institution further the development of context of meaning value orientation and symbolic codes social institution are important structural components of modern societies that address one or more fundamental activity and or specific function they differ from formal organization which are hierarchically differentiated via an organizational structure and serve primarily to facilitate rational action and the realization of particular interests in sociological theory there are three prevailing interpretation of social institution functionalist approaches marxist inspired conflict oriented explanation and neo institutionalism approaches First, let us understand a bit more about functionalist approaches. Functionalist approaches emphasize the importance of social institution for the maintenance of social system. Social integration is only possible when institution perform core function. Three such function can be distinguished. First, institution structure human social relationship and serve as a catalyst for the role expectations. with which individuals are confronted in their everyday actions second institution regulate the distribution of gratification and the allocation of suitable person to position of power third by means of symbols policies and ideologies certain social institution represent and stabilize the value canons and context of meaning of social systems Conflict theory believes that because conflict and inequality are inherent in modern societies, social institution do not perform equally well for all members of society. The social institution is not permanent system. Due to the change of social environment, it is necessary to change or modify that. Our society changes gradually and suddenly due to the various environmental factors and internal social factors. The social institution must have some capacity. to absorb such a fluctuation the social institution may endure such a fluctuation for a while the social institution has some capacity to accept the changes and modification however it has a limit point that the social institution cannot observe the changes and modification anymore it is the turning point to consider new social institution life cycle of the social institution let us now study the life cycle of social institution The social institution is not permanent it has a lifetime the span of the institution is dependent on the environment of the society in case of social institution following process forms that life cycle of the institution the preparation phase decision point introduction phase steady operation phase the turning point the social conflict phase migration phase the preparation phase will be initiated by the social conflict between the institution and the peoples of the society the institution has a nature to survive because of the stakeholders of the institution however when the institution faces to the critical time to be replaced government must start to develop new institution that covers the gap between the institution and the society 
When the institution is ready to introduce, government must make a decision to the timing of introduction. After the decision point, government starts to implement the new institution. The people may confuse with the new institution. Government must carefully monitor the reaction of the people. It is necessary to establish the procedure for the implementation. After the introduction phase, the institution will be on the stable operation phase. Due to the social environment change, it is necessary to revisit the institution. Structure of the social institution What is the structure of the social institution? Let's find out. The social institution must be designed based upon the grand design. The grand design is the framework and vision of the society. It directs the social institution. It is necessary to have a mechanism to enable the new institution in the society. The organization and the information system are enabler of the institution. Established and reliable procedure is also enabler for the institution. The budget allocation for the institution implementation and operation is to be prepared. All of this mechanism is necessary for design, develop, implement and operate the institution. Continuity and change. The term social change is a term used within sociology and applies to modification in social relationship or culture. The study of socio-cultural change is a systematic study of variation in social and cultural systems. There are inherent methodological problems of identification and measurement of change and rarely does one cause produce one effect. All societies are involved in a process of social change. However, this change may be so incremental that the members of the society are hardly aware of it. The action of individuals, organization and social movement have an impact on society and may become the catalyst for social change. Broad social trends, for example, shifts in population, urbanization, industrialization and bureaucratization can lead to significant social change. 98th and early 20th century social theorists focused fairly extensively on modernization but they tended to present on oversimplified grand narrative which resulted from heavily ideological interpretation of the contrast between tradition and modernization. There is a high correlation between the rate of social and cultural change and resistance to that change. In times when members of a society feel that change is out of control, it is likely that the desire for continuity becomes more extreme resulting in backward looking idealization of the past. While social change is itself continuity, certain periods of human history have created great transformation. The Industrial Revolution and the French Revolution created one such great transformation. Polanyi saw it as beginning in the 17th and 18th centuries and continuing today categorized by the rise of a capitalist, global economy and growth in production and wealth, a scientific revolution, new ways of thinking about causation, moving from religious to secular, a new concept of time, population growth, immigration and urbanization. An overview of some social theories. Early evolutionary theory. This theory of social change was based on the assumption that all societies developed from simple, small scale beginnings into more complex industrial and post industrial societies. This development process was thought to be unilinear, that is, there was one line of development from simple to complex. Modern evolutionary theory. This more updated version sees socio cultural evolution as a tendency for social structure to become more complex over. Modern evolutionary theory concedes that change is not always necessarily progress and that it will not inevitably produce greater happiness for all the people concerned. Functionalist theory, often called structural functionalism. Functionalist theory assume, on the whole, that as societies develop, they become increasingly more complex and interdependent. Functionalist theory emphasizes social order rather than social change. Key concepts of this theory are those of differentiation and integration. Differentiation occurs as society becomes more complex, but the new institution must be integrated with each other into the whole. Conflict theory 
Marxism also saw itself as offering a scientific account of change, but in opposition to functionalism, this focus on the premise that radical change was inevitable in society. Marxism argued that the potential for change was built into the basic structure of society. The relationship between social classes, which Marx saw as being intrinsic to the social relation of production. Marxic believed that social order was maintained through socialization, education, and ideology. Symbolic interaction developed as an alternative to functionalism, emphasizing that social interaction is symbolic in nature and that social reality is constructed by the people. Symbolic integrationists argue that people give meaning to events and objects and that those people agree about these meanings. Other recent social theory, especially the discussion coming out of America, focuses on forms of collective behavior as a force of change. For this purpose, social movement is defined as a large number of people who come together as part of an organized effort to bring about or resist social change. There are several types of these movements ranging from reformist or revolutionary groups through a reactionary movement. A central fact of recent social theory is the movement away from overarching grand theory towards the partial, the fragmented. It has been and still is problematic to try and construct theories which attempt to explain everything the relationship between social change and all aspects of society. The grand theories of the past arose out of the ideologies of their periods. It may be said in the future that fragmentation theories like postmodernism have come out of what is increasingly become the me era, family and kingship. Let us now understand more about family and kingship. The family forms the basic unit of social organization and it is difficult to imagine how human society could function without it. What are main characteristics of family as an institution? Universality. There is no human society in which some form of the family does not appear. Malinowski writes the typical family, a group consisting of mother, father and their progeny, is found in all communities, savage, barbarians and civilized. The irresistible sex need, the urge for reproduction and the common economic needs have contributed to this university. Repeat, have contributed to this universality. Emotional basis. The family is grounded in emotions and sentiments. It is based on our impulses of mating, procreation, maternal devotion, fraternal love and parental care. Limited size, the family is smaller in size, it is a smaller social unit. Formative influence, the family wells an environment which surrounds, trains and educates the child. It shapes the personality and molds the character of its member. It emotionally conditions the child. Nuclear position in the social structure. The family is the nucleus of all other social organization. The whole social structure is built of family units. Responsibility of the members. The members of the family have certain responsibilities, duties and obligation. Social regulation. The family is guarded both by social taboos and by legal regulation. The society takes precaution to safeguard this organization from any possible breakdown. Kingship. Kingship is the relation by the bond of blood, marriage and includes kindred ones. It represents one of the basic social institutions. It is very important in primitive societies and extends its influence on almost all their activities. A fine and consanguineous kingship. Relation by the bond of blood is called consanguineous kingship such as parents and their children and between children of same parents. Kingship due to marriage is affine kingship. New relations are created when marriage takes place. Kingship includes acnates, spends, agoras, cognates from mother's side and band sheets, atta bandush, pitru bandush and matru bandush. A decent group is any social group in which membership depends on common decent from a real or mythical ancestor. Thus, a lineage is a unilateral descent group in which membership may rest either on matrilineal descent, patrilineage, or on matrilineal descent, matrilineage. In a cognate descent, all descendants of an ancestor or ancestress enjoy membership of a common descent group by virtue of any combination of male or female linkages. A clan is a unilateral descent group, the members of which may claim either matrilineal, patricient or matrilineal 
descent matriculate from a founder but do not know the genealogical ties with the ancestor or the ancestress type of kingship primary kingship every individual who belong to a nuclear family finds his primary kingship within the family there eight primary kingship husband wife father son mother son father daughter mother daughter younger brother elder brother younger sister elder sister and brother sister secondary kingship outside the nuclear family the individual can have 33 types of secondary relatives for example mother's brother brother's wife sister husband father's brother tertiary kingship tertiary kingship refer to the secondary kingship of our primary kingship for example wife's brother son sister husband's brother and so on there are 151 types of tertiary kingship kingship usages kingship usage provides guidelines for interaction among person in these social groupings it defines proper and acceptable role relationship thus it acts as a regular of social life avoidance it means that two kingship normally of opposite sex should avoid each other in almost all societies avoidance rules prescribe that men and women must maintain certain amount of modesty in speech dress and gesture in a mixed company technonymy according to this usage a kin is not referred directly but is referred to through another kin in a traditional hindu family wife does not directly utter the name of her husband but refers to her husband as the father of so and so avunculate it refers to the special relationship that persists in some societies between a man and his mother's brother this usage is found in a matrical system in which prominence is given to the maternal uncle in the life of his nephews and niece imitate the usage of imitate gives special role to the father's sister her father's sister is given more respect than the mother among today the child gets the name not through its parent but through the father's sister naming the child is her privilege cowvates the usage of cowvates prevalent among the khaki and the today tribes make the husband to lead the life of an invalid along with his wife whenever she gives birth to a child he refrains from the active word takes diet and observes some taboos which are observed by his wife joking relationship a joking relationship involves a particular combination of friendliness and antagonism between individuals and groups in certain social situation in these situation one individual or group is allowed to mock or ridicule the other without offense being taken the usage of the joking relationship permits to tease and make fun of the other the caste system the caste system is very integral to the indian society let us talk about that now about 1500 bc powerful nomadic warriors known as aryans appeared in northern india the warriors were from central asia but managed to overcome the himalayas by finding lower passes in the mountains such as the khyber pass in pakistan The Aryans conquered the Dravidians of central India and imposed their social structure upon them. The Aryans divided their society into separate castes. Castes were unchanging groups. A person born into one caste never changed caste or mixed with members of other castes. Caste members lived, ate, married and worked with their own group. At the top of the caste system were the Brahmin, the priests, teachers and judges next came the shastriya the warrior caste the vaishya caste was the farmers and merchants and the sutras were craft workers and laborers the untouchables were the outcasts or people beyond the caste system their jobs or habits involved polluting activities including any job that involved ending a life such as fishing killing or disposing of dead cattle or working with their hides any contact with human emissions such as sweat urine or feces this included occupational groups such as sweepers and washermen people who ate meat this category included most of the primitive indian hill tribes the caste system has been illegal in india for more than 50 years but it continues to shape people's life broadly speaking a caste system is a process of placing people in occupational groups it has pervaded a several aspects of indian society for centuries castes are an aspect of hindu religion other religions in india do not follow this system market as a social institution the analytical model of the social mechanism can be composed of two components one is the mechanism of national conduct it shows the relation among the educational system the national activity and human resource development 
Another is a framework of national economy. It shows the relation among the administration of the government, the national activity, and the social performance of the national economy. The mechanism of national conduct. We can find potential issues in each one. For instance, we can find a lack of experienced professional for the administration and national activity in A. The root cause of the issue of labor force is in education and training system. It is necessary for the country on the transition to modern capitalist economy to strengthen the experienced profession labor force by using advanced countries cooperation. It is necessary to invite the engineer, professor, lawyer, administrator, business person and other fields professional. The framework of national economy. In chart B, we can find the issue of political influence. In the normal situation, the political system works for facilitation of the national activity. However, in the country on transition from socialist economy to capitalist economy, the political system sometimes could be an obstacle for sound national economy. The governance system is not established yet in the country. The arbitrary judgment by politician and the intervention for particular beneficiary are happening in the society. Summary. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. The social institution is not permanent. It has a lifetime. The span of the institution is dependent on the government of the society. The study of socio-cultural change is a systematic study of variation in social and cultural systems. The family forms a basic unit of social organization and it is difficult to imagine how human society could function without it. A descent group is any social group in which membership depends on common descent from a real or mythical ancestor. The Aryans divided their society into separate castes. The hierarchy was topmost were the Brahmins, then the Shastriyas, the Vaishyas and the lowest were the Sudras. The analytical model of the social mechanism can be composed of two components. One is the mechanism of national conduct, another is the framework of national economy.